I know it's uh, kind of late in the day, and uh, we've seen a lot of incredible talks today, and the sun is shining outside now, but we're going to ignore that for a minute. Um, in Kate's talk earlier this morning, you know, she talked about different kinds of presentations, and one of those was, you know, a, a casual, cobbled together at the last minute type of presentation. And I just want to say, if you think that's what this is, it's entirely intentional. Um, <laughs> going for that, uh, going for that. Um, too cool for school, hipster chic presentation. No, it's, um, I was in the back of the room maybe feeling a little guilty while editing my slides while she was saying that. But, um, so I work for the National Park Service, so um, there are a lot of different uh, park service units. You know, there's 417 units, um, and then there's additional park service entities beyond that. So there's a lot of different types of places. They're not just all national parks. There's national historic sites. Um, there's national rivers, national battlefields, many different things. So many different types of maps we create. And these buildings work well on sort of large, larger scale maps where you're trying to point out specific buildings. Um, like a walking tour map of an urban area where you have uh, certain museums or, or such that you need to show. And last year I gave a talk on hyper-realistic 3D oblique maps that are made with sort of complex 3D software such as View Infinite or Cinema 4D. And so this talk is sort of like the opposite of that. These are very simple sorts of buildings. They're easy to make. Um, and uh, let's just dive right in and look at some examples. So this, I warned you, this is my only slide with all text, and after this, we'll get into pictures and maps and buildings and all that. So I use these three names, let me go back real quick. Exonometric, Pseudo 3D, and 2.5D, and I sort of put them on there as a joke, um, although it's not very funny, um, but they're, <laughs> <laughs> They're interchangeable names that I use, and one of my ideas was like, let's settle on a name, what to call these, and I don't know, exonometric is a little technical, so I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, I think pseudo 3D is what I usually call them. I'll even call them 3D buildings. The distinction is not very significant. So what is exonometric? I didn't really know what it meant when I put it on the title, um, and after researching it, I still don't really know what it means. But. Uh, <laughs> So it's, it just know that it's not perspective view. So in a perspective view, you know, things, lines in the distance kind of converge on each other. Vertical lines aren't necessarily vertical. So in exonometric, vertical lines stay vertical. Um, it just makes it simpler, um, makes it easier to um, create these things. So they are simple to create in any vector software. And you can do that, and they will fit well on a planimetric map. So you can do that just using building footprints, which are easy to find anywhere. And I will show you that here shortly. Um, and they fit into street grids really well, so, and you'll also be able to see that. So if you go to the Exonometric Wikipedia page, you will see this diagram, which I won't go into the details. I don't know about any of these uh, angles, these differences. There's many type of types of different exonometric maps. Um, I think the maps, I'm actually, the buildings I'm actually creating fit more into the military oblique there in the bottom left, but, but just know if you really want to know more about it, you can. So this is one of Tom Patterson's maps. Uh, it's New Bedford Whaling National Historic Park, Historical Park in Massachusetts. And this is kind of my reference go-to when I'm creating these, these buildings because I think it's a really good example of it. It shows lots of different, thing, um, different types of buildings, shadows, many things. So I use it as a reference. You can see how it sits into the street grid and these were built from a building footprint. And this is another type of map. This is another Tom Patterson map. And this one does actually have one of these buildings in it. It's in the very bottom. I will zoom into it here in a second. And it's just an example that you can sh show how you can throw these simplified maps into really nice looking 3D maps. So if you zoom in, Crater Lake Lodge there um, has a very simplified, uh, a simplified building created in Illustrator. This is another Tom Patterson map. I swear I'm actually going to show some of my maps in this presentation. <laughs> But I guess if I did just show Tom Patterson maps, you'd probably be okay with that, um, understandably. So this one is, was his experimental map of the Grand Canyon where scale is distorted. It specifically shows the south rim and the amenities that are available on the south rim of the Grand Canyon, which is where most people go to. And I won't go into the details of how, because he's given talks about this map, of how this map works. But, so, but this is really where my journey with these, uh, 
these pseudo 3D buildings started. I started there at the National Park Service about three and a half years ago, straight out of grad school, and I'm coming to work with Tom Patterson, and I'm super excited, and I'm gonna get to map mountains and do shaded reliefs, and I get there, and Tom's like, why don't you work on some of these buildings on this map? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, it turns out I actually really like making these buildings. I like the challenge of the different architectural, um, there are different architectural challenges, different things on the buildings, um, and one of Tom's reasons for giving it to me is when I started there, straight out of grad school, my illustrator skills weren't really up to par at the time. I knew illustrator, but in grad school, you know, you don't get to, you don't get to make maps as much as you want to. You have to take other classes that involve writing papers and stuff like that, boring stuff like that. So this was actually a really good way to get really good at illustrator really quick because you do a lot of different things with the vector buildings when creating these. And so being PCD, I decided to kind of focus on different things, different ways of creating this and different illustrator tips and techniques um, to, to do this. <clears throat> um, and I don't know why I like making these buildings so much. Um, I always add too much detail. So in our, in our office, we're designing primarily for print, um, mostly the Unigrid brochures that you get when you go to a national park, similar to what Joe was talking about this morning with Black Canyon. And I always put too much more detail in it, more detail than I need to, and I end up having to take detail out because they're printing about the actual size of your thumbnail. So they're not very big, usually. I have some examples of where they're possibly being printed bigger. Um, and I just, I think if you ever played with Legos as a child, it's a similar sort of feeling when you're building these buildings, or if you've ever played Minecraft or The Sims where you get to design a house or something, it, it's, a, it's a similar sort of feeling. So I will go through some of these buildings here. This is uh, one of the buildings on the south rim of the Grand Canyon. I think it was one of the first buildings I made. And I should point out, because this was three years ago, I don't really remember making them, but I know I made this one. And, and at the time, they went back to Tom, and he did edits to them and made them look as good as they do now. So I hadn't actually been to the Grand Canyon at the time. I have since. So I have to use a lot of different resources to get pictures of these buildings, imagery, all kinds of stuff. So each one of these shows something different. This is a picture of the Hopi house, and it's just something online that I found and was able to look at, find different pictures, different angles, and create this. And I remember, I remember wanting to put in the ladders when I was creating this, but that's just, that you see in the picture, but that's just too much detail for the size it is on the piece of paper. So there's another one I created, the Kolb Studio. It's um, a sort of art gallery museum, I believe. And it sits right on the rim of the Grand Canyon, really incredible view. Um, there weren't that great of pictures of it, but there, someone had actually created 3D models of these. So this is a 3D model in SketchUp that someone else built. So at the time, I didn't really, I didn't export it from SketchUp like I'm gonna show you in a minute how to do. I just sort of used it as a guide, switching between windows, had one on one monitor, and built it in Illustrator using, using this 3D model view. So the next one, the park headquarters. Certain buildings, you know, people just don't take pictures of. You know, the visitors don't really go to the park headquarters. It's more of an administrative building. It's not a particularly exciting building, but it needed to be on the map, so it's, you can't just Google it and find pictures of it. But it has an interesting shape. It's a flat top. And this is just some satellite imagery, or actually just imagery from Google. It might not be satellite. And uh, showing the shape, and you're able to recreate it at least enough that people will find it recognizable. Um, another building, the park store. There's a lot of build pictures. There's a lot of pictures of um, from inside the park store, but there's not a lot of pictures outside the park store. So you can there's good street view there. So you can just kind of walk around the building on your computer and use that to create these buildings. And it has a weird curve to it, which was interesting. There's always challenges. Buildings come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, and I wasn't necessarily particularly interested in architecture before starting on this, but, but I, I find myself being more interested in it now that I can uh, find these different challenges and different types of roof types and, and such. So I'll just briefly go over how to make these buildings. The easiest way is to make them from a building footprint and you can just draw it yourself. Most buildings are actually just rectangular, so I picked something here that's slightly different than just a rectangular building, but you can get building footprints from OpenStreetMap or just outline the building yourself or walk around it and look at it and draw it. 
Um, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. So first I just copied the layer and I'm doing this in the vertical direction. So that's one key component of all these buildings is the vertical lines in reality are always vertical on the paper. And so that's kind of what makes it pseudo 3D as a, rather than a perspective view. So then once you do that, you can use your mouse and hold down shift or just hit the up button and move that, the roof of the building to wherever you need it to go, um, just moving it in the vertical direction. <clears throat> So once you do that, you just use the pen tool to draw in your sides, give it some color, give it some lighting, light side and shadow side, and uh, you'll have at least the start of your building. <clears throat> so most buildings, most buildings don't have flat roofs. There's a lot of different kind of roof types, and uh, I've made many of them, but the normal one is just sort of a gabled roof with slanted sides. So in doing that, you can just take your flat roof, you can add anchor points to it so you can find the halfway point. You can cut those anchor points and make two sides of the roof so you may have a light and shadowed side. And then you can raise it up just using the up arrow or hold down shift and move your mouse to keep it on the vertical axis. And from there you can give it the right colors. But also there's a lot of editing, so there's a lot of going back and forth when you're making these buildings. So you can, if, if it doesn't look right, you can adjust that. You can grab those anchor points, move them, maybe the roof is steeper, maybe it's not quite as steep. And so there's a lot of back and forth that happens with that. Um, windows and doors. This is, uh, this is the Hawthorne Hotel in Salem, Massachusetts. It's on the Salem Maritime National Historic Site map that I will show in a minute. It, um, it does have this weird U shape, although you can't see it in that, in that picture. I mean, it has lots of windows, so this could be very tedious, but there are some tip, tips to do that. So you have this oddly shaped rectangle that is the side of your building. So first you want to copy that, transform it, make it a different size to make one window from that. Make it roughly the size you want it. You can copy it to the other side and use the blend tool. So using the blend tool, you can set the number of windows you want in between the two. So, and, and this is adjustable. So a little bit of trial and error, you'll get your windows and then you just copy them down. So you copy them down one time, you got another row of windows and then you just fill in the rest of the windows. Um, so it can, it's actually not, so they'll all be aligned perfectly. They're all aligned vertically, but they still have that odd shape, which isn't exactly a rectangle. <clears throat> so I just threw this map in here because it's relevant to the next slide where I show shadows, but this map never actually saw the light of day. It ended up, you know, the design is sort of an iterative, iterative process and people go back and forth. So this one didn't make it to print, but it was one where I had made <laughs> several of these types of pseudo 3D buildings. And this is uh, relevant to here too. This is Jamestown. Um, where colonists settled in 1607, and this is only about an hour up the road from here. Um, and actually, much closer to here is Cape Henry, where these colonists first landed and thought they were gonna build their community. So it's just over, it's on a naval base or some sort of military base, um, um, just down the road from here. They decided that wasn't the best place. These colonists did, ended up going about an hour upriver um, and formed Jamestown. So shadows, so even though these are pseudo 3D, you are trying to give the illusion that they are coming up off the map. So shadows can really help that, help that sit on the landscape and help give that illusion. So to do this, you can just copy your layer, um, copy and paste it in place, um, use Pathfinder Unite, make it black, push it to the, give it a Gaussian blur, push it to the back, rotate your shadow and then Adjust the transparency and multiply it. And then you have your, I believe this is the Terse Centenary Monument, something like that. That's what it's called. That sits in Jamestown. And it's very recognizable from far away because it's very tall. So this is going back to one of Tom Patterson's maps. I'm just kind of turning the shadows on and off to show how they help sit into the landscape. And while doing this, here's another illustrator tip, wireframe, wireframe mode is your friend. Um, I realize all computers don't have the command button, but uh, if you get a computer with a command button, this will work. Or there's some other way to do it with other computers. Uh, 
So this is uh, the Seattle Maritime map. This one was interesting. It was designed as a wall map for the visitor center. Um, it's very large. This is actually only a section of it, but this dish does show all the uh, exonometric buildings on it. Um, and there was some talk, uh, they had 18 feet of wall, so there was some talk of printing this 18 feet wide. As far as I know, it hasn't printed yet, and I doubt they're gonna use all that space, but that would be really cool if they did. So this building is one of my favorites. I put a lot of detail on it. Because this is a wall map, these buildings are gonna be a little bigger, so detail will hopefully hold up in printing. And it's got side stairs, all kinds of stuff, little porches. Um, I don't know why, I just really like this one. This one is also famous. This is uh, also in Salem on that map. This is the House of the Seven Gables. It's a 17th century home. Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote about it in the 19th century. And so trying to create this in Illustrator would kind of scares me. I, don't, I wouldn't want to do it. So it's just one of those that's too complicated to build from the ground up with the building footprint because there are seven gabled roofs and other stuff going on, chimneys, all this. So I got this model off SketchUp. People like to uh, create these models, so you can use that as a reference, and you can actually export it from SketchUp straight to your Illustrator file. So to do that, so we'll get to that in one second. This is another building, the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, also very complicated, has sort of these sloped, curving glass roofs. It's, I haven't been there, but I've heard it's a really cool building, and I've looked at it a lot on Street View and stuff. It also has a model that someone has created and kindly shared with the world that you can use for reference. So, <clears throat> um, the wrong button. So using SketchUp, so this is bringing it into SketchUp. SketchUp defaults to perspective view, which is not what you want. You want parallel projection. So going between those, you can see how parallel projection shows, all, sh shows everything vertical and perspective view sort of skews it a little bit. So then you can just export to a PDF, um, put the camera to parallel projection, export as a PDF, and open that in Illustrator. You have a blank canvas, and you can, you can do whatever you like with it. So I'll just skip through these, because I'm running through out of time, but this is my work in progress um, map that I'm doing right now for Klondike Gold Rush in Skagway, Alaska. And there are, oops. There are many NPS-owned buildings in this site, and they previously didn't have a walking tour map of the downtown, and that's where most of the visitors that come off cruise ships that only have a few hours in the town, that's where they're wandering around, and they get lost, and you can kind of see the cruise ships from anywhere in town, but there's different ways to get to them. So hopefully this map, when it does print, will alleviate some of those problems. And I was able to take all these pictures and walk around the buildings myself when I, get, when I visited, so these are my pictures, and there's some really interesting buildings there. So real quick, the last thing, this map is uh, in the Atlas of Design that just came out. You may think it doesn't have any of these types of buildings in it, but it does in some of the cities in the background, just to show the cities, put a few blocks in there. This was uh, created by Joe Milbrath and myself, and mostly Joe. So here, King Salmon, Knack Knack, Dillingham, they have little blocks. It looks silly close up, but when this is printed very large and these are still very tiny, it just gives the impression that there is a city there. So the last thing is, um, if you want to play with any of these files, we have our production files on our website, nps.gov slash cardo. It's on the next screen. And you can download later Illustrator files for all the parks, Photoshop files, or just JPEGs. And it's a really good resource. If you don't know about it, check it out if you want to play around in Illustrator or Photoshop. So thank you.